One of the peculiar geniuses, I think, of Mississippi fiddle tones is a propensity to have tunes of a very individual length, a certain number of measures determined by the whim of the fiddle player. What do I mean? Well, if you're playing for a square dance, you play eight bars, eight measures of music, you repeat it, and then you have another eight bars of music, and you repeat that, and you do it over and over until the dancers get tired in a very regular, dependable pattern. Mississippi, not so much. Um, it might be six and a half bars followed by 11, or some other nearly random seeming number, but numbers are meaningless. What it really turns out to be is they get a melodic idea that starts when it starts, and it's over when it's good and damn ready, and not before, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Case in point, and this is a bit of a high wire act for me, so you have to hold your breath and see if I make it into the second tune. I'm going to play a medley of Fisher's Hornpipe with Fisher's Hornpipe. The first one is from Aldous Massengale. It was his contest winning tune in the 70s. He's an elderly gentleman who had made 78 recordings in the 30s with a band called the Newton County Hillbillies. His version is seven bars of music played once for the A part, and then the B parts, uh, nine bars, played twice, so it never even squares up. And then I'm going to play the what I think is the all-time masterpiece of this particular genre, uh, a Stephen B. Tucker version of Fisher's Hornpipe, and I don't even want to think about how many measures are in it. <laughs> it does not enhance my success rate with this. <laughs> anyway, uh, a well-known tune, Fisher's Hornpipe from the 1800s. Mm.